Brothers and sisters, on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, I'd like to reflect with you on dealing with weaknesses in our lives. You know, many of us are more comfortable talking about their strengths, what they can do or what they have done. We celebrate the heroes, the ones who have made it. Rarely do people talk about their weaknesses. Someone say that you are as sick as your secrets. There are many things that we bottle up inside our hearts that are so heavy. St. Paul, in the second reading today, taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10, confesses his weakness to us. He says that as he was receiving revelations from God, a thorn in the flesh was given to him by an angel of Satan. He prayed, he said, three times to the Lord, God, take away this thorn from my flesh. Liberate me. Did God take away the thorns? No. Rather, he received the message from God, the message of consolation and comfort and strength. God says to St. Paul, my grace is sufficient unto you. My power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, toward the end of the second reading, St. Paul says, I am no longer ashamed of my weaknesses, of the persecutions, of the insults, of the hardships, of the constraints I face in life, of the suffering. I am no longer ashamed of them. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Elsewhere, St. Paul, repeating the same word, says, I can do all things through the help of the one who strengthens me. Many people ask the question, what was the thorn in St. Paul's flesh? There are many theories by biblical scholars. Some might understand the thorn in his flesh in a literal sense, some others in a metaphorical sense. For some, St. Paul, according to this tradition, had some bodily ailments that he was suffering. He carried this sickness throughout his whole life, even though he prayed always that God may heal him. But God said, my grace will help you. St. Paul some say he had a terrible headache throughout his life, a blinding headache, a terrible migraine. Some others say that St. Paul suffered from a poor sight. You remember that on his way to Damascus to persecute the Christians, he encountered Jesus and the light came from heaven and blinded him. For three days he was blind. Eventually, his sight was restored. But tradition has it that he was not fully restored. Maybe that was God's way of reminding St. Paul, you are human after all. I am still God. And we find in many passages of scripture, in the letters of St. Paul, for instance, in the conclusion of St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 6, verse 11, St. Paul says to the Galatians, I am writing to you this letter with a bold character, a large character. Why, one would wonder. Because in those days, they did not have this. So they didn't have magnifying lenses. So he had to write in bold character so that he can read what he was writing. Elsewhere in Galatia chapter 4, Verse 13 to 15, 
St. Paul, thanking the Galatians for the love they had shown to him, said, I know that you love me so much that if it were possible, you will pluck your eyes and give it to me. Why would they pluck their eyes and give to him? Because he had a very poor sight. Some others think that the thorn in St. Paul's flesh was his own humanity. The temptation that comes with our humanity. In his letter to the Romans, chapter 7, verse 24, St. Paul refers to this inner temptation. He says, The good I desire to do, I do not do. And the evil I hate, I find myself doing. And then he said, Oh, poor me, wretched me, who can save me from this body of death? Some of us feel that really the thorn in St. Paul's flesh was the remorse he felt, the remorse of conscience for the martyrdom of Stephen, for, for which he was responsible. Those who stoned Stephen laid their clothes at the feet of Paul. So he had a remorse that was lingering. The word remorse is from the Latin remorsus, which is to rebite. It's like regurgitating something that is inside and biting it again. So he had this pang of conscience the gnawing of conscience, the prick of conscience, when he remembered that he was a persecutor. And elsewhere in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9, St. Paul even acknowledged this. I am not worthy to be called an apostle, he writes, for I persecuted the church. Maybe he never fully forgave himself. But also, Maybe a lot of people in the early church did not fully accept that this man is a changed man. And so St. Paul faced opposition from within, within the early church and persecution from outside the church. People who knew his past never accepted him. And he struggled with this. Some others say that St. Paul was of a small stature. Even the word paulus is from the Latin word pavus, small, little man. Could that be the thorn in his flesh? Whatever it is, he confessed this, writing to the Corinthians said, I have this thorn in the flesh. What a way to be open with your own people. He was not hiding his weaknesses. He took it to the Lord and the Lord assured him, yes, I will not take away the thorn, but my grace is enough for you. This is the good news for each and every one of us. I love this passage very much because it assures me that my weakness is not going to defeat me. I'm not going to be ashamed that I have sinned. I'm not going to be ashamed of my past. For we are, you are as sick as your secrets. So what is the thorn in your flesh? Maybe you are like Jesus. The thorn in the flesh of Jesus in the gospel today was the rejection by his own people who said, this man, this handy man, he cannot be doing these miracles. We know him. How many people have treated you that way? Looked down on you, rejected you. Sometimes the thorn in your flesh will not come from the outside. Like St. Paul, in this case, it will be your family. Your friends, the thorn in the flesh. Maybe you're struggling with some weakness right now in your life. Maybe the devil has filled you with a sense of guilt about your past, that your past will not be forgiven and your future will not be bright. Maybe you are even scared about your own weaknesses. The gospel today, the good news for us is the promise of the Lord. My grace is enough for you. My power is perfected in your weakness. So like St. Paul, we can say, 
I am no longer afraid of my own weaknesses, of my own mistakes. I am no longer afraid of my own past because God is taking me by the hand and will see me through. So lay down your wounds, your thorns at the feet of Jesus. Bring it to Jesus like St. Paul did. And his grace will help you. May you experience the abundant grace of the Lord Jesus wherever you feel weak, wherever you feel unworthy. And like St. Paul, remember that it is when you are weak that you are strong. Because he who is in you is stronger than the thorn in your flesh and the weaknesses and the oppositions and the condemnations that you face. So move on with faith in the Lord. Amen.